I mean, I'm speaking as a, a, a detainee, a victim of ISA and printing presses and publications act. Of course, I'm happy the ISA is revealed. Uh, I'm happy the ISA is revealed, but disappointed that the printing presses and publications act is not revealed because I don't want people to suffer what I have suffered. I do, want, do not want any Malaysian to be in prison without trial and unjustly the way I was prisoned. Did they without trial under ISA and then after that in prison under the printing presses and publications act. So for the PPPA, the printing presses and publications act, he has not gone far enough. But with ISA, if it is truly repealed then, as I said, it will, it will enlarge democratic space and also uh, helps to strengthen human rights in Malaysia. Okay? On, a, on one point, give you press freedom. On the other, give you freedom of privacy and true full disclosure, as well as right of reply. A lot of press don't give right of reply, very susah. Right of reply, they are very important. You might as well abolish it and then have a new, you call maybe called Freedom of Press Act. Because they have some NGO questioning, they are done later. But I think these, these, these questions are valid. These questions are valid. Maybe you should call it Freedom of Press Act. By the time you're talking about the amendments, to get a consensus, I mean, I, I would say that your point is valid. Maybe we should call it Freedom of Press Act. I find it very amusing that there are a lot of personalities or leaders who had opposed the abolition of ISA now suddenly come and support the abolition. Oh, they said we have actually opposed it for so long. As in now trying to claim credit for the announcement by Najib. I'm sure Malaysians will be able to distinguish who is a sheep and who is a wolf in sheep clothing. This is also a result of the Arab Spring. You look at the Arab Spring. So many dictatorships have fallen because in modern times, dictatorship doesn't work anymore.